Hello viewers, you are watching the channel CQ Tech and in this video I'm gonna discuss about the ship hull block parts and uh, their purpose and uh, this is the brief uh, video about uh, these parts. Usually a ship block is constructed in inverted manner and it is recommended by design to make it uh, inverted because it is easiness in making its jig and jig template. So what is jig and what is jig template? So let's discuss in our next slide. For the ship block this whole thing is the jig of ship block jig is basically a basement to construct a block so what uh, this jig means that this is the i beam horizontally this is the i beam vertically this is also i beam vertically and these are the u-shaped channels placed over the ground floor so this whole thing makes a jig which is basement of a block and over this jig the block template will be welded and uh, and over the jig template or block template the block will be constructed so next slide will show you the block template this is the block template these are the light brown things these are the block templates over these block templates the block uh, will be constructed and uh, so uh, it is recommended by designer to construct the block inverted because it is easiness in making these jigs uh, and these jigs uh, are not complicated when we are constructing the block in inverted manner so here you can clearly see that this is the vertical i beam again vertical i beam again vertical i beam this is the horizontal i beam and uh, this hole is the jig and above the jig is the jig template and above the jig template will be the block in this uh, slide this is uh, this thing is the stiffener and uh, it is attached uh, and welded with the deck plate its purpose is to reduce the bending stresses in the deck plates and also uh, it uh, increases the suction modulus of a ship so suction modulus is basically uh, resistance to the bending moment so it enhances resistance to the bending moment so it is the secondary loading member of a ship it is also known as Holland profile so here is the deck beam it is the transverse frame present over the deck plate it has web and flange so this portion is uh, known as web and this uh, protruded portion is known as flange so basically uh, this is the transverse uh, member or transverse frame runs uh, transversely along the deck plate and uh, you can uh, visualize it clearly when i show you um, the block picture in the next slide so just think it uh, and uh, consider it in your mind and these uh, provisions these are the cutted portion or provisions or slots are present uh, for the stiffeners to pass through them so move on to the next slide you will understand uh, where it lies on the ship block deck transverse frames so this uh, is the deck beam and it runs transversely along the ship block so this is the transverse frame so this is the deck beam and this block is constructed in inverted manner and this is the front view of the block and uh, when the block is first constructed then first of all the deck plate is uh, um, uh, placed and after deck plate this girder that girder is running longitudinally that is placed and after that girder these uh, stiffeners are placed and after placing these stiffeners the transverse frames the deck beams are placed all along the longitudinally so after these uh, deck beams the chalk pieces are placed and after that the bulkhead and then the process uh, becomes continued so again you can see this is uh, the the block is constructed in an inverted manner and this is the front view of the block and that is the t girder that is uh, the t girder and that is the deck beam 
that is the deck beam and that is stiffener and this is the deck plate so first of all the deck plate will be placed over the uh, block template and after that uh, this T girder will be uh, welded all along uh, longitudinally uh, of the ship block and after the placing the T girder the stiffeners uh, will be welded uh, longitudinally and after stiffeners uh, the deck beam will be uh, welded uh, transversely and uh, these uh, uh, transverse frame will be placed longitudinally as well so chalk piece this is the chalk piece that is the metal strip that small metal strip is the chalk piece and the purpose of the chalk piece is to avoid um, the bending of this stiffener towards the deck plate so it basically um, it is basically the supporting member of this uh, uh, the stiffener so it um, it's another purpose is to reduce the shear stress In this uh, slide, you can see this whole portion is the bulkhead as this block is constructed in inverted manner. So that's why this portion is looking like uh, it is uh, the bulkhead making in inverted manner. So this bulkhead is made always made watertight by using different components. In next slide, you will find out the doublers which are used to make uh, these bulkheads watertight. And uh, furthermore, uh, the purpose of this bulkhead is to um, uh, to um, reduce the transverse uh, loading uh, and it also uh, helps in making partition longitudinally uh, uh, across the ship. So again you are looking at uh, the ship lock from the front and uh, this is the bulkhead. Okay that portion is bulkhead and to make this bulkhead watertight doublers are used and so what are doublers so these are the u-shaped metal strips which are welded with the uh, bulkhead plate and stiffeners and to make this portion this portion this portion all the way transversely along the ship block uh, so this u-shaped metal strip is the doubler and if you look at this portion this portion is not uh, watertight and this is the void hole present here and there is no need to uh, make this watertight so only there is need to what make uh, the bulkhead watertight so that's why doublers are welded and moreover and this is uh, the bracket and that bracket is welded uh, with a stiffener and uh, with both the stiffeners the stiffener present on the bulkhead and the stiffener uh, present on the deck plate so uh, it basically the sporting member of both the stiffeners and avoid from the pending of these stiffeners and furthermore, uh, this is the chalk piece and this is the deck beam and uh, you can see that uh, this is overall the deck platings, deck structure. Here you can see the T girder sporting the keel plate. So this girder is known as keelson. Both red girders, both red girders are sporting the bottom shell plating, bottom shell plating. So both girders are known as intercoastals, uh, side girders, or simply intercoastals. While this is a, uh, these both are the pillars, also known as tensions. Their purpose is to join the ship bottom with the uh, deck, the upper deck. And uh, these are the side frames or the transverse frames, as you have seen in the previous slide. That uh, these are the deck beams. But here in this case, these decks beams will be known as the uh, side shell beams or uh, the transverse uh, frames. And, uh, and same is the case here. Same is the case here. So these um, transverse uh, side shell frames contains uh, uh, the flange. The yellow portion is indicating the flange. So flange basically enhances the bending strength of these frame. And if we move forward that uh, these these are also these are the floors the brown uh, colored things are the floors these are also the transverse uh, sporting members and uh, in these members usually uh, holes are present but here in this case the holes are not present usually uh, in them in floors the holes are present because in these uh, floor portion usually uh, the tanks are made 
like water tank, fuel tank, uh, bilge tank, etc., are made. So that's why uh, the, this portion is uh, placed at the bottom. This is the flow. So here these are the flat bars. These are usually flat. They have only the web portion, no flange. Um, use along the stiffeners to provide resistance against the bending. Usually uh, these are the flat bars placed uh, or welded uh, along the floors to provide resistance against uh, the bending stresses. Here you can see that block is constructed in inverted manner and, uh, and the first of all the jig is placed and after that the jig template is placed and after that the whole um, block is constructed and when the block is constructed fully then it is transferred uh, to the paint shop for painting purpose and finally it is transferred from paint shop to the bird for block erections so in the next slide you will uh, find the definition of block erection So this is uh, the upright uh, form of the ship uh, block when it uh, reaches uh, the berth. So when this block, uh, if considered that this block is the incoming block on the berth and uh, if this block is to be welded with the another block that is already present on the berth, then this will be known as the block erection. So here this is the jig template or the block template and over it this is the deck plate and stiffeners are placed and over them are the floors these are the floors and these floors contain holes these holes are large enough to pass our crew members through them so that's why these hole this hole is known as manhole it is provided in the tanks because when there is need to um, clean the tanks or uh, to, uh, to for the maintenance purpose to uh, or for the inspection purpose to look for the tanks and then these holes provide access to the crew to go into the tanks and check the tanks and uh, you can see that around the floors these are the flat bars this is the flat bar this is the flat bar these are welded uh, along these floors to uh, avoid from the or to reduce the pending stress. So here this is the AutoCAD format of the um, ship hull design. So, um, uh, so usually blocks are uh, erected on the berth. For example, this block is already constructed and uh, the next block like this block uh, is ready to be uh, transfer to the berth then both the blocks will be welded in future then this uh, phenomena will be the block erection again these are the transverse frames and uh, these are basically the deck beams and they are supporting the side shelves so uh, in uh, the ships having length less than 120 meters these ships are exposed to the transverse uh, bending stresses so that's why in the ships having length 120 meters, less than 120 meters, the transverse frames are preferred to use because in uh, those ships, the transverse bending stresses are higher than the longitudinal bending stresses. While in uh, the ships like large ships, like the commercial ships, uh, where the transverse, instead of transverse uh, uh, frames, uh, the longitudinal frames are preferred because in those uh, uh, in uh, those uh, large ships uh, the longitudinal bending stresses are higher as compared to the transverse bending stresses um, in other words the larger ships have uh, uh, more chances of hogging and sagging see this is the deck beam and this is the side shell beam and these are the uh, longitudinals uh, or stiffeners running longitudinally along the ship and uh, uh, this portion is the web and this is the flange and uh, 
uh, these are the again the transverse frame this is the first uh, transverse frame this is the second transverse frame this is the third transverse frame i have told you about uh, that when to use these transverse frame so moving on to the next slide so this is uh, uh, a very basic video on the shape hull block parts and uh, you must understand these concepts before moving forward to the higher concepts so hope you like this video and uh, if you want to know about uh, some other parts of the ship then you can comment below and uh, i will answer your queries and uh, keep watching this uh, video subscribe to my youtube channel secure tech and like this video with special thanks to all viewers